I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment. Now, if you've ever experienced a migraine, then you know it's much more than just a headache. And for the millions of people who have chronic migraine, these unpredictable headaches can happen 15 or more times every month. Now, June is Migraine and Headache Awareness Month, and we're joined by Dr. Andrew Blumenfeld. He's a director of the Headache Center of Southern California, and he's talking to us uh, to help us learn more about this often misunderstood condition and some new hope for patients looking to prevent migraines before they begin. Welcome to the program, Dr. Blumenfeld. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Neil. A a bit of your background, uh, if you would, and then let's talk about what a migraine headache is and how it differs from other headaches. Yeah, I'm a neurologist. I specialize in headache medicine. I direct a a large uh, headache center in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Um, In our center, we have multiple providers, but we see about 100 migraine patients every day. Now, a migraine headache, uh, it's not just a simple headache. Uh, What is a migraine? What causes it, and why is it different? A migraine is a disease of the brain, and so there are a lot of neurological symptoms that go along with the headache. The headache itself has typical features, like a one-sided headache that can be throbbing and pounding and made worse by movement, and there might be associated nausea with vomiting or even sensitivity to light and noise. Mm-hmm. But then uh, before the headache begins, patients often can get uh, visual changes, blind spots that slowly expand, or numbness that creeps up the arm and into the face, or even trouble finding words, and, and they can appear to be confused. Um, often before the attack starts, so patients get a lot of fatigue. Um, they may be yawning a lot. They also get food cravings. Um, some of the food cravings we see are, are things like chocolate. People think that chocolate's a bricker, but in fact, it's a a food craving that occurs in the prodrome of migraine. So this is a complicated neurological disease that occurs in unpredictable attacks, and the attacks last about three days at a time. Um, Between these attacks, the patients have a lot of anxiety because they're worried about when the next one's going to hit. And so they have this ability related to the headache, and then they also have disability from the anxiety. Are, are we aware of what causes migraines uh, at all? Well, we know that it has a strong genetic trait to it. There are multiple genes that have been identified. Um, it affects about 39 million Americans, and we see it much more commonly in, in females than in males. Um, if we look at women between the ages of 20 to 60, one in four of them will suffer with migraine. So it's a common disease with a genetic basis, but then there are also environmental triggers like stress or hormonal changes like changes in estrogen or dietary issues like drinking too much caffeine. Mm. These are all factors that can drive it, but you do need to have the genetic makeup in order to have these attacks. And it would be incorrect to think that these are just a stress reaction. Uh, the stress will make them worse. Mm-hmm. But even without stress, these patients would still suffer with headache. Now, although stress is a contributing factor at times, are there misconceptions surrounding migraine that need to be dispelled? Absolutely. That would be a very valuable message if you could get that out to your community because the epidemiological data shows that most migraine patients do not get accurately diagnosed. Mm-hmm. They often get mislabeled and they get mislabeled as tension headache, and then they're told that it's just a stress reaction, which is not true. This is, as we pointed out, a genetic disease with lots of other triggers, and it's a treatable condition. Mm -hmm. So you need the right diagnosis in order to get to the treatments. And I think for your audience, the best way of thinking about this, the simplest way, is any headache that's recurrent that keeps coming back month after month, Mm-hmm. and is disabling, interferes with their ability to function, is most likely to be migraine rather than tension type headache. And so um, don't minimize this condition and go and see your healthcare provider and start having a discussion about this headache disorder possibly being migraine. 
Can a head injury that results in a headache turn into a migraine? Can it change down the road and become uh, designated as a migraine type headache? Or is this something, as you say, that is going to be genetic uh, from the outset? That's a, it's an interesting point. You know, we see some patients who start off with a very low frequency of headache that may be misinterpreted as, as tension or even sinus headache. Mm-hmm. They then have a head injury. They transform to this daily pattern of headache. And really, they had a low level of migraine before, yeah. which transformed because of the head injury into this post-traumatic headache disorder that now has the same features as, as a migraine patient. Um, so we look at that and treat it the same as migraine. Now, after a proper diagnosis has been made, what typically is the uh, the go-to management strategy for patients? So if a, a senior healthcare provider, obviously is going to give them lifestyle guidance, like you know, reducing caffeine and getting regular sleep and exercise, mm-hmm. but then presumably prescribe an acute treatment, something to, to take when the attack hits, and then a preventative treatment. So the preventative treatments are medicines that are designed to stop the headaches from coming. And there have been lots of recent advances over the course of the last year um, with new preventative treatments that have come to market. Um, the most recently uh, available one is a medicine called Biopsy. Mm-hmm. Um, and Biopsy is interesting because it's given by infusion, an intravenous infusion that's done once every three months. And so you would have come in for four infusions across the course of a year. And this uh, treatment works very rapidly. Within a day, we start to see benefit. Mm -hmm. And that occurs in in most of the patients, not all of them, but about 50% of them will see benefit on the first day. And then it will reduce migraine frequency by 75% in up to a third of the patients, one in three patients. It does have some side effects like a, a scratchy throat, a runny nose. Mm-hmm. I'm working with Lundbeck to help increase awareness about migraine because, as you mentioned, uh, June is Migraine Awareness Month and also about biopsy. Uh, but for your audience, I think the important thing is for them to see a healthcare provider and to start talking about the diagnosis mm-hmm. and then also to, to look at preventing this disease uh, with preventative treatments because migraine is a progressive disease. It uh, it worsens over time. Mm -hmm. So you do want to look at means of preventing it. Uh, If your audience wants to learn more about this, they should go to viepti.com, which is B-Y-E-P-T-I. Thank you for the website, doctor, and thank you for your time as well here on Health Professional Radio with us. Thank you for your questions and for helping to increase awareness about this debilitating disease. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.